I'm gonna start uh, start recording real yep. quick. All yeah. right, all right. Let's talk about trains. No, no. Let's talk about <laughs> Scottish place names. You have to read the list. Scottish place names. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it. That's the episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't pronounce yeah. any of these. <laughs> Milngavi. Inverness. Yeah. Inverness, yeah. Yeah, Mil- Mil- Milngavi is good, actually. To be fair, yeah. it's not as bad as I've heard, actually. Uh, Anstruther. Mm hmm. Anstruther. That's, uh, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. P- Kirk could bride. Partial credit. No. 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 Ba- no. no. Ballad <laughs> Chulish. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I, my, my parents now live near to, um, they're, they're in Wales and they live near Machanfeth. So um, yeah, we're, we're, on, we're in good ground. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let, let me get the screen recording going here. Well, while you're doing that, I'll tell the joke that my, my grandmother told me about the, um, the policeman in Paisley who. He finds a dead horse in a uh, cozy side street, which is like it's written Causeway Side, and he tries to spell it for an hour, and eventually he can't, so he gives up and he drags it around the corner into New Street. <laughs> okay, we have slides. Um, I'm recording. Mm-hmm. Everyone's recording, right? I'm also eating a korma at the same time, but hopefully the microphone won't pick that up. If it uh, does, that's, I that's apologize. Fine. Everyone can get jealous and hungry. That I, I'm so hungry. <laughs> it's not very good. It's not I good. I'm going to start the podcast. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Well, There's Your Problem, a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the guy with the engineering degree. My pronouns are he, him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Alice Caldwell Kelly. My pronouns are she, her. I'm the girl with like. Two thirds of a law degree and a coma. So get jealous, bitch. <laughs> I I am Lee Anderson. I am at Old Man Anderson on Twitter. My pronouns are he, him, and my degrees are economics and math, thanks to again a paperwork error on behalf of Rutgers University, the State University of New Jersey. And, and, and we have and, a, we have a guest today. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Gareth, yes, tell them you about do. yourself. <laughs> I'm, I'm, my, my name's Gareth Dennis. My pronouns are he, him, and um, I, I'm a rail engineer. Yeah, I've got a degree in civil engineering too. Mm, yes. Um, and, and for some reason, I, I don't use any of it. Actually, I use a little <laughs> bit of it. I use the hydraulics bit of it for drainage, and that's pretty much it. We've, why didn't you go into podcasting? <laughs> well, this is it. It's uh, <laughs> oh, it's just, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of drainage in this. <laughs> you can tell I graduated from Rutgers. <laughs> You you could make literally hundreds of dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, doing well, this. yeah. Rail engineering is like it's not it's not so well paid. You kind of you do it for the love. Um, that's what you tell yourself anyway. <laughs> mm. So, so what do you may notice about the slide we have in front of us? There's a train on the ground. That's not where it's supposed yeah. to be. No. Mm. Oh, that's not good. It's it, it's called overland travel. It's fine. Its wheels are in the wrong place too. Yes. Yeah, mm. I thought trains were supposed to be on these things called rails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's rail engineering well, well, See, what they've done here is they, they've yeah, moved yeah, the rails. They've moved the rails and replaced them with this well, station. I do, I do teaching sometimes, and I say, like, the one thing that we have to do as, as, like, track engineers is stop trains from disappearing downwards into infinity, which is kind of exactly what looks to have happened here. Yes. Mm. So, this There's is... trains all the way down. This is Washington Union Station in January of 1953. And this train just overran the platform and fell into the basement. This is the wreck of the Federal Express. Ooh. And that's what we're gonna. That's what happens when you don't support the post office. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like weighed yeah. down by all of the Amazon packages. I never heard of a wreck of the USPS. So you know, st- strike one. Anyway, so this is what we're gonna learn about today. So, all right, what was the Federal Express? You're, you're looking at the Northeast Corridor here. If you remember in the APT episode, I said the West Coast Main Line is kind of like the Northeast Corridor. Well, the Northeast Corridor is kind of like the West Coast Main Line. <laughs> We're doing it like by Atlantic. Yes. Well, uh, uh, learning <laughs> yeah. At this point in history, right, the, um, 
the the Northeast Corridor was run by two private companies, uh, and the dividing line was just north of New York City, right? The up here was the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad, and then and then I got to change the color of the pen. Oh boy, down da- down here was yeah. the Pennsylvania <laughs> Railroad, right? Two houses, yes. a like and dignity. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, that's in Verona, where yeah. we set our tail. New York, New York, go fuck itself. But yeah, sure, <laughs> why not? <laughs> so, at, at some point in the late 1800s, because I forgot to put these notes in, because I'm a moron. Um, the uh, New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad, and the Pennsylvania Railroad get this idea: we're going to run a continuous sleeper train from Boston to Washington D.C. Right. Now, this is before Penn Station and all the tunnels were built, right? So what they did was they brought the train as far as a terminal in Harlem, right, in New York City, and then they did a car float Mm -hmm. across New York Harbor, and then... Oh, that sounds efficient. (laughs) Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. We we talked a little bit about this in uh, a previous episode that we may or may not have destroyed yes. audio <laughs> processing issues. And we were a very well run <laughs> operation. Here. And then the train would continue on its way down to Washington D.C. Right. So after they built, uh, at some point they then changed that routing so it actually went up to Poughkeepsie and then came back down. Um, but then when they built the um, when they built Penn Station. That's when the train assumed the form it would have in 1953, right? So, this is hmm. th- this was a route that required several locomotive changes, right? Um, it's because beyond New Haven here, the train uh, tracks were not electrified. That didn't happen until 1995. Uh, excuse me, Jesus 1999. Christ, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Jesus, it gets worse. Yes, New Haven, Connecticut, the last outpost of civilization. <laughs> Strike <laughs> there. Sounds deeply familiar. Like, oh yeah, like let's electrify that bit a hundred years after it's useful. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> the the train would run with uh, New Haven Railroad uh, equipment the whole way. Uh, or the passenger cars were all New Haven Railroad equipment. The locomotives had to change several times, though. So from Boston, a diesel locomotive would haul it down to New Haven, right? That would be one of these Alco uh, DL109s, which the, the, the New Haven Railroad was, Sexy. like, the only operator of these. Because cause no one... Mm, and, and that, like, orange livery they have, uh, right? This is before that. Um... Oh, okay. that was not until like the two years after this accident occurred when um, McGinnis uh. took over the railroad and ran it into the ground in 22 uh. months. You, <laughs> you, should, you, should have, you should have accidents because it will get you a better livery in the long run is where we're going. Yes. With this. Yeah. Didn't the Rock Island use these fucking things too uh, they, at some point? <laughs> so a lot of railroads had one or two of them and then the New Haven had 60 of them. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's like ask? the guy who like invests heavily in a Tesla or something. <laughs> so, all right. So as far as New Haven, it was behind one of these. Then in this era, they would have hooked it up to one of these EP4 electric locomotives. Just, you've got to love the aesthetic there, haven't you? I mean, oh yeah, just... it looks real good. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Alice, I think that's that's pretty much accurate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You with the it's not like <laughs> yeah, like a lot of Corma <laughs> everywhere now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm just assuming that, like, because I have like uh, the depressive mindset that I've COVID and this will be my last episode. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I know. I know. Yeah. in the comments. Folks. It's gonna be one of those sitcoms where somebody dies, and we're gonna have to bring in. Yeah, Alice's it's, well, no, it's recently yeah, found you, sibling or something. Yeah. <laughs> you have to do that, but also it's the like TV thing where someone like coughs once and they're into like a handkerchief or something, and they'll be like, oh, they're gonna oh, die. Yeah, TB. Uh, got the TB. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got the TB. Yeah. <laughs> got TB <laughs> foreshadowing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so at New Haven, they'd hook it up to one of these guys, and that would bring it as far as New York, Pennsylvania Station, right? Which still looked nice back then, right? And then mm. at Pennsylvania Station, they'd take the EP4 off and they would put on a GG1 
which was the Pennsylvania Railroad's yes. electric oh. locomotive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> big, big fan of the pins. Oh, yeah. They look good. Um, Steampunk crossover big time. I mean, wowza. It's, it's like a, yeah, it's like a diesel punk thing. It's, it's great. It's like there's a, we only did one loco, like in the whole history of locos in the UK that even remotely resembled this sort of aesthetic. And it's currently in Shildon, which is in the northeast of England. Uh, and it was the Deltic hmm. prototype. I think you guys talk about Deltics every now and then. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah big it's fans. like the, what, it's blue and it has the go faster, like, doodad stripes. Oh, Ooh. man. That, it's ad, just, that adds oh, yeah, horsepower. Yeah, it yeah, does. Yeah. Yeah, 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 measurably. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Carol Shelby said so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the AC Cobra. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why you put the, stri the pinstripe suits on a pinstripe suit, is so you can go it's faster. True. You get close up to them, sure. they're, they're like, it's, it's like the sort of thing in your house next to your window. I love it. Like They're, they're, they're like attached on with, with pins, with a pin hammer. They paid someone with a pin hammer <laughs> to actually individually attach them on and then paint them in sort of cream. It's not painted on? That's, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just a, a train with side yeah. boards just kind of flying. Yeah, down. yeah, yeah. It's like exquisite yeah. molding on the inside, on the interior of the cab as well. Yeah, yeah. Right. Jeez. All right. So, since this was a sleeper train, right? You know, I left Boston at 11 mm -hmm. in the evening, right? There were several uh, pickups and set outs on the route, right? Because you don't want to wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning to get into 30th Street. Just say 3 a.m. Just say 3 a.m. Please. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to wake up <laughs> in, in the middle of the night. 3.30am 3, 3 in the morning, yeah. Uh. <laughs> but I, I feel like you could cram an extra one in there and be like, oh, 300 hours am yeah. in the morning. Just 500 fucking miles across New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. <laughs> at like, literally at 2 to 3am with him and my dad. Fucking telling me how actually that was right because it was for it's emphasis. For emphasis, yeah. <laughs> <It's crazy talk. laughs> they, they, they should study that car ride for like long distance. Like, how are we going to get to Mars uh, with like a five hundred day ship with everybody crammed in together? Should be well, like that. Just sit in there, baby. <laughs> so, Fifty miles in, he's asking you if you want a whoopie pie. You fucking don't. He won't take no for an answer. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is a whoopie pie? Oh. <laughs> a whoopie pie is an American thing, I guess. Uh, okay. Because, of course, you don't have that. Uh, just like no. you guys have never been to the moon. But uh, hmm, that's also uh, true. A whoopie pie it, is we, like. We traded, it, we traded it for healthcare. Oh, oh well, you know, but we've still been to the moon. So, <laughs> yeah, we can get healthcare. But, is, is there uh, a lot anyway, of healthcare on the moon? So a whoopie pie is <laughs> a whoopie pie is two pieces of like chocolate cake with like frosting in the middle. But it's I mean it, they're bad. They're bad. I understand mm. that you know whoopie pie Twitter or whatever might be mad at me about it, but I only come to speak truth. Well, all of those brands are just like one guy in Brooklyn who's probably dead of COVID by now. So who cares? R.I.P. Oh, it's like. He's just like endlessly like replying to himself, like switching accounts from like the Sunny D account to like the Wendy's account to be like <laughs> kings supporting kings and just sort of shoot me in the fucking head. You just you just got me thinking about what a British attempt at a moon landing might look like, and then I remembered that we did Ooh. land something on the on Mars, and it was called Beagle. Yeah, and it was just a, <laughs> we just sprayed debris at the surface of the Mars. Uh, of Mars. Yeah, we, we, before before we launched it, there was a photo of Professor Colin Pilger, the guy who yeah, was in charge yeah. of it, wheeling this thing around in a shopping <laughs> cart. <laughs> <laughs> and then we proceeded to launch it at the surface of the planet at about 15,000 kilometers an hour. Yeah. 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 Very, very, that's very fast, right? Very, very <laughs> still, like, still technically a landing. <laughs> think, think about those Soviet like moon impact missions where you're just like, yeah, we're going to learn as much as we can from having some sensors on a thing that we just fucking shoot into the moon. It's great. Yeah, that, but unplanned. Yeah. They should have just gone through with the plan to nuke the moon. That would have been funny. <laughs> <laughs> then you have two moons. And then tides are going every which fucking way. <laughs> so, alright. Uh, you, you think Venice has had a weird summer already? <laughs> so, so... In in order to in order that you know if if you're if you get on the, the train move, the move, if yes. you get on the train in Boston you want to go mm. to say not Washington D C you want to go to Philadelphia you want to go to Baltimore you want to go to Wilmington rather than 
you know, wake you up in the middle of the night and kick you off the train, you would go into a, a one or two designated sleeper cars and they would just uncouple it from the back of the train and move it to a siding when you stopped at that station. And then you could, you know, wake up mm. at your leisure and leave. I just get, this That's still quite, happens in Edinburgh literally. now. Like the sleeper train, the Highland sleepers, the Caledonian sleeper still does this. Folk are sleeping in some like knackered 1970s British rail coaches. Uh, oh no, they've been replaced by the ones that break now, haven't they? Um, and they're st- and they're sleeping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, they're sleeping in them, and they and they shut them around. So yeah, it still happens. In uh, yeah, hmm. yeah. It's, it's, it seems quite luxurious to me, seventies British rail cars, notwithstanding, to just be like, yeah, just get up when you want. You know, we'll just just, just yeah, chill. It's like, nice. it's like the um the the uh like the. Fuck the like sleeper cars that you used to have in like uh, uh, train stations that were like not connected to the line that people could just like rent out to sleep in. <laughs> yeah. uh, genuinely, seriously, that was that was a British thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might still there's be. Still, there's still not. quite a few around. Yeah, we. Uh, uh, we I used to catch. I used to catch the sleeper to get up to the Highlands when I was a student in Edinburgh, and um, and yeah, occasionally you'd like cross your fingers that the old Mark II coach at the back would go pop. Because then they'd put you into the Mark Three, the advanced, the stepping up in life, into the Mark Three coach, and you get to sleep in a bed. And uh, you know your head, you know, <laughs> sleep sleep is like a inverted comma situation. But you know, yeah, mm. it's, uh, it's, it's lap of luxury. You know, mm. everything kind of shaking, bits of light fitting coming down from the ceiling on you. It's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> the UK is, and I cannot stress this enough, a failed state. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway. Uh, I guess a question to ask here is why, why didn't they just run through with, you know, the New Haven locomotive and just different hmm. company, why didn't the British? different crews? Uh, oh, no, nah, I mean, uh, they, they, uh, why'd yeah. they swap out uh, the GG1? No, it's just because they myself. did, yes. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's back to the livery yeah. again. You can't yeah. have uh, the, like, blue clashing with the green or whatever. Yeah, it's, one of it's very, going to have to change, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, and because it, it takes less time to, like, recouple yeah. a new locomotive than it does to, like, spray paint the old one a different colour. <laughs> this, 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 this does surprise me, because, like, even in the ye olde days of, like, steam things puffing around, in the UK, at least, they did actually just sort of arrange through running. So it does surprise me that they had to like unhook and swap things out. But uh, you know, capitalism. So that's fine. I'm like, yeah, that's that's exactly it. I feel like the US is like, what if we took all of the failure of the UK, but we made it more capitalist? <laughs> uh, the weird thing is, once um once the railroads merged uh, in Penn Central, which will be a future episode, um, they just decided to take the GG ones all the way up to New Haven. They were like, yeah, fuck it. Mm. The voltages were compatible. Everything was compatible. They just did the <laughs> locomotive switch at Penn Station because they did. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you need central planning. Railroad logic, baby. <laughs> now, there's, there's like complications when you swap locomotives, right? You have to make sure all the systems are intact, right? In this case, you know, that steam heating for all the passenger cars. You got to make sure the electrical power is hooked up. But most importantly, you got to make sure the brakes are working, right? So you got to do a brake test, which at sure. its simplest is just you go forward at a slow rate of speed and then stop. And then you say, yep, the brakes work. And, and, then, and then you can just go on your merry way. Um, That's yes. fine. That seems fine. It's still the way it's done today. Yeah. Hmm. Well, like, what what would even the the more uh like a more invasive form of this be? You go down each coach and you like check the brakes individually. That seems like hey a pain guys, in the ass. Doing a <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't, 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 don't mind me as I walk through the car of sleeping passengers, pull a lever, and a like a two hundred decibel whine just goes through the entire car. Hey guys, enjoy your luxurious train travel. <laughs> just a guy with a massive lump hammer just walking from one end of the train to the other and hitting everything yeah. that you can see. <laughs> Just smashing out every single light. <laughs> this guy's union, we can't fight. <laughs> All right, so on this particular day, January 14th, 1953, right? Uh, the Federal Express mm. left Boston. At the head end were three uh, New Haven Railroad 8600 series lightweight coaches, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, there was one heavyweight combination baggage coach car 
and there were 12 sleeping cars, right? Mm. You gotta carry all of those like old-timey sleeper trunks. With the like, uh, the like, completely like leather Re encased was, thing. Rebar for some reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got, I, I got to ship my like thing of concrete down to <laughs> Wilmington. <laughs> this was the most efficient. One. It's one of the things that made them heavyweight cars. Is they had like a a three inch deep concrete floor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so yeah. cool. Also, why does it, why does the delivery on that like it must be just the photo? But why does it look like it says "new and uneven"? That that's not what it's called. You Even know, Connecticut don't know how to spell so yeah. good. <laughs> that's yeah. true. They they just it, kind of like start it guessing. Is, it is oh, after the new. It is basically Alabama once you get past new. Once you get past <laughs> New Haven. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Alright, so this train leaves at the normal time, it gets as far as Kingston, Rhode Island, where they stop the train because the brakes keep sticking, right? I need to just- I need to, so we've got brakes sticking, I need to just pause this, just very briefly pause this, so I can wince at the permanent way, the track that I can see in this picture. I just want to make- just want you to know that I'm wincing, visibly and audibly wincing. Anyway, sorry, brake failures, oh, let's, no. let's go. <laughs> what, no, 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 what's, what's, what's wrong, wrong with the track? Yeah, what's, what's wrong, wrong with the track? track? <laughs> What the, these two tracks in the foreground? Just it's, it's, why is it made of cheese? It looks oh. like it's made of cheese. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that actually does look cheaper. pretty bad. <laughs> like those those locomotives. What they weigh like one hundred and fifty tons? Like probably. Yeah. 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 Oh wow! Was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could. That's I'm fine. Sure that's probably fine. fine. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. This is a Springfield, Massachusetts station, which has actually gotten appreciably worse. Since this photo <laughs> was taken, so <laughs> <laughs> oh, once they once they stop the train, you know the inspector gets out. He starts looking at the looking at the various couplings. And he discovers the third car, yeah. car number eighty six sixty five, has a closed angle cock. Right, steady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, he, after, he, he works yeah, his way down guy. the first two cars with the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> He's just hitting everything. Just like this, this is, yeah, this is just this line of dents down the outside of the first two cars. <laughs> Found it. All right. So we remember from Black Mag Antique this simple diagram. Hmm. Um, we do. Yeah. Does it still have the cut out cock on it? Yes. Yes, yes, it, it does. does. Yeah. Right here. Awesome. Nice. Uh, oh, yeah, they, 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 they cancelled my one of those. <laughs> Easter eggs. <laughs> oh. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, what is the angle cock of the various kinds of cock on the air brake system, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's this guy down here, right? That's the uh -huh. valve that closes the air brake system off from the next car, which would be over there, right? Uh, because it's got to go at an angle for to fit through the couplings. Yes, yeah, pretty sure that's a hospitalizable condition, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Not now. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> if, if if it's at an angle for more than four hours, uh... <laughs> too bad. Hospitals are full. <laughs> this is this is what an actual one looks like. It's this guy here, right? Mm. So. Mm. That is that is that is a very lewd picture you've yeah, got yes. there. That seems, yeah. <laughs> just, we have to turn the adult content setting on the channel to on now. Uh, okay, okay. So, um, now the reason you have this this valve here, the angle cock, is that it you, you close the one at the end of the train, right? So the air doesn't just leak out the end. That's yeah. fine. Just run the compressor the whole time. Just into into like a. a yeah, just a venting air out the back. Yeah, yeah, if you do that, you got a, like an atmospheric railway. Because <laughs> these are these are compressor driven. Not these aren't vacuum brakes, are they? Just to, yeah, they're are compressor. They? They're compre yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. We're old fashioned still in the UK. We've got our vacuum mm -hmm. brakes still. Yeah, whereas this has uh, like it literally. I'm going to horribly misunderstand what a compressor is, but it's a big sucky thing in the front with a locomotive that drags air in using power and like compresses. Yes, it. yes, yes. That, that, yeah, that's awesome. just about right. So, okay, cool. Now these are on every car because sometimes you might want to close off the braking system of certain cars to keep the brakes released. Right. So. 
You know, let, mm-hmm. let's say you want, you, you, if you're like moving cars around in the yard, you don't want to go through the hassle of setting up the brake system every time you got to use them. So you just close the angle cocks on each end and then you can like kick the car around or if you need to hump it or pull it or any other, any, any other, any other maneuvers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe once again that we almost, or perhaps, actually did lose the episode where we talked about freight car pulling. Yeah. The most dangerous, <laughs> <laughs> stupid way of moving a freight yeah. car. Uh, wait, you, you just you get a jousting baby. <laughs> you, you just get a big pole and you shove it with a train. Yeah, on the adjacent <laughs> track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm gonna be able. I hope I'm. I'll be able to save the episode. I haven't taken too hard of a look at it yet, but uh, we will talk about polling mm-hmm. on this um on this show at some point. Um, so, all right. But you know, if 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 this air hose is connected to another car, right, and you close the angle cock on one car, all the cars behind that will no longer respond to drops in air pressure in the line. And therefore, you can't activate the brakes on them, right? Um, then, because hmm, there's no air going back and yeah, forth, they will slowly bleed off air and eventually apply the brakes. You know, over a long period of time, but they're not gonna. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I, I love that as a systems thing of just being like it's fail safe if you wait long. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> in the in the same way that the Chernobyl nuclear power plant is fail safe once you wait twenty four thousand years. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, so it's a bad idea. If, if you know, on a passenger train, it's certainly not good if one of these were to be closed somehow. So anyway, they hmm. reopen the the valve, right, and they bring the train down to Penn Station. They check again; the valve is still open as it should be, right. And then they, um, you know, they continue on their merry way down to Washington D.C. Right. So now we have to talk about. The New York, New Haven, and Hartford's 8,600 Osgood Bradley coaches. Oh, ah, seen in such beautiful condition. Indeed, yeah. This is what they well, look like when they. At least the track looks better. Yeah. Small <laughs> the... <laughs> Why does it just have rocks on it, though? Just. <laughs> it's fine. Does that impede the movement of the train? No. That's true. Have That's you true. been to the moon? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I'm not gonna like get on my high horse on this one because we're clearly not any better at maintaining our, our our train cars. But like, why? My question is, and I know the answer is because of ballast and just like a bunch of other bullshit. But like, why does everything that's on a railway accumulate an inch thick thing of grime in within an hour? And why is it always the most disgusting color? Like it's never the same color, but it's always the worst one you could expect. Oh, you should you should try doing platform surveys in Doncaster, bearing in mind that we still have oh, trains man. that release poop straight onto the track. Oh man! Oh, oh yes! Yeah. Nice. Oh, those are some of my favorite. Oh, Dave Matthews. Those man. are some yes. of my favorite shifts. Oh yeah, yeah, oh. shifts and shit. It's good stuff. Mm, great, mm. yeah, fantastic. You've got to have a special bag to store your shoes in afterwards. Wow! Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, and in that's beautiful in Doncaster as well. So you know, particularly mm, bad. Yeah. Thank, thank you for your service. Yes. <laughs> but like yeah. braver than the troops. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! Man. <laughs> just be just just mentally contemplating how much shit you have to get on like a a, a network rail orange high vis garment for it to no longer be considered high vis. Oh, I can tell you to the nearest like liter. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least I, I, at least I'm not doing most of my work down in like the southeast where they still, where they have like third rail electrification so you can get fried by like electrified liquid poop. Uh if you're looking the wrong way. like it's all what kind of a hell all of a way to go. <laughs> what, what a way to go. Yeah. I, can we bring back the atmospheric train and just have Rat Vista again? It sounds nice. I, I was watching a video yesterday of some of those third rail trains, and I was like, there it's just a bare ass third rail for like a hundred yeah. miles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you touch it, it just blows a hole in you. At least with AC, it just kind of melts your skin and hair. Like, no, no, DC just blows a hole in you. Yeah, it's good. Mm. It's good stuff. I, I remember seeing a thing from a like a, it was a marine engine transformer where a guy had like shorted it 
and there was literally like an outline of clean floor in the shape of two boot prints, oh, and the rest of it was just soot. And you're like, yeah, well, F, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 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 Your problem is that you've shorted the thing, and now you're missing an electrician. Uh, yeah, double whammy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. That's no a hell of a way to power trains. Yeah, the, that. Just like capture <laughs> that and then put it into a rail and then power trains with it. Just perfection. Yeah. And just and just have it just there where anybody can like fall on it or step on it. It's very efficient. Yeah, and like in the most crowded part of the whole UK as well. So like the platforms aren't always super busy or anything. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's cool. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so these these coaches, the Osgood Bradley coaches, right? These were built in 1945. The New York, New Haven, and Hartford ordered them from Pullman Standard, who built them at the Osgood Bradley plant in Worcester, Mass. Worcester, Mass. Worcester, Mass. <laughs> Worcester, Mass. <laughs> the idea here was the 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 railroad <laughs> wanted shiny new stainless steel cars to improve improve perfectly. their image, right? Nailed it. It's it's stainless. It's fine. They didn't want to pay for stainless steel, right? Oh, of course they didn't. <laughs> ah, yeah. Why would they? It, it, it's like literally, it's the Lionel Hutz thing. If they got this all messed up, stainless steel? No, stain, comma less steel. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, they they didn't want to go and splurge on bud cars because those work. Um, so that but don't break, yeah, but don't break, yeah. Um, so they got Osgood Bradley to take an older car design and apply stainless steel aesthetic fluting to the outside. That's what this mm. is. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. that's so depressing. We're back to train siding boards yes. again. You can just nail shit to the side of a train <laughs> if you want. The rules. They they put like go fast destroy, and that's why it's clean in stripes and then not in stripes. Oh, that rules! Yeah, these do have a distinctly like Indian sleeper train kind of vibe going on. <laughs> like, mm. yeah, it needs the like, big X on the door, though. Yeah, the yeah, it's missing the big X. <laughs> that's true. But other than that, oh, how do you know they have plague? <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I want to know what the roofs of these are like for like seating four or five hundred people. Bad. Uh, the mm. rest of this car is made. Or all of this car, all the structural bits are made out of something called core ten steel, right? That's uh that's a mm. weathering steel. The idea is that when it gets rusty, right, the rust adheres to the surface and protects the rest of the steel from rusting, right? Oh, like a, a sacrificial anode. So like yes. Uh, it's just like you just made a whole rail car out of zinc, but less expensive. All the rage for cool. making bridges out of it at the moment. Oh yeah. Core ten steel. It, mm. Everyone loves it. It's very pretty, uh, actually. I'm, I'm sure this will not come back to haunt us. No. We're all like three three nope. heads in a jar doing well, there's your problem, episode four billion. Uh, like fucking 1776, we can just be like, well, we talked about this, if you go back and listen, <laughs> in 2020. Uh, our, our earthbound uh, Patreon. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's three ways to combat corrosion here that they're doing all at once, right? Number one, obviously, is the stainless steel, right? Number two is yeah. the core 10 steel. Number three is painting the steel, right? Now, mm. all of these methods work great individually. Oh, God. So they must work better <laughs> together, right? When, no. Yeah. No, it does not oh. work better together. <laughs> is this one of those chemistry <laughs> equation situations where the electrons start adding to... Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, once there was like one little <laughs> hole in, in the paint on the core 10 steel, all the corrosion happened right there immediately and started <laughs> spreading rapidly. Like the idea of That's core ten steel mean. is you do not paint it, right? Um, but yeah. they did. But you, you got to have that cool orange. Mm. <laughs> and then there's which like was a... blue originally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you got to have that cool blue. <laughs> and there's weird galvanic corrosion between like the stainless steel and the core ten steel, and then also oh, water gets trapped behind the stainless <laughs> steel. <laughs> Right. Oh, these, these, you, you know, you know, an engineering disaster is good when you have a poorly understood chemical phenomenon occurring within it. Like wh wh when you're at a point where ke where chemically you're like, we can't actually say for certain what this looks like, so we've had to hypothesize. <laughs> <laughs> so, so these cars turned into rust buckets almost immediately. Um, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, you don't say. But. It's fine. All all of the structural bits of the car are now rust, but it has some immaculate stainless steel fluting on the sides. 
But there is another there is another flaw in this car in addition oh, to the whole the car, bottom. right? In addition to the whole thing being shit, they put <laughs> the angle cock like directly underneath Attic. the coupler, right? Okay. Hmm. And this meant under rare circumstances that angle cock could hit the coupler housing, right? And if Bonk. it hits it in the wrong way, it might alter its state. Uh, That's fine. Yeah, f famously, yeah, also a thing that occurred in the Gare de Lyon accident, which is very similar in a lot of ways, <laughs> where a French RER, uh, like regional car, had the same thing, but instead of a coupler, it was a dude's elbow. Like, it was positioned in such a way that you, you try to manipulate uh, a, a release valve, and like, your elbow hits the angle cock. Oops. Nice. <laughs> yeah, just beautiful, beautiful piece of ergonomic design there, where it's in such a way that you can just like accidentally hit the thing, not notice, and just go about your business. That's that's fantastic. So, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> look, Gardelli, I, I, I almost don't want to say too much about it because it would be a great episode. But uh, it also features a guy in a train, like with no brakes, screaming into a central station at like ninety kilometers an hour on the phone to the signal, like uh, "hon hon hon, je ne have no brakes, pa." Uh, <laughs> and, but because there's, but because there's no identifying information in in that call, the signal is just like, w uh, "Who is this N new phone? Who this?" Oh damn, uh, kids! <laughs> yeah, yeah, IP freely, and just like, and just pushes the big button that stops stops all the trains, which is great if you're a train that has brakes, yes. but this one didn't, and so, yeah. So, alright. So the train, you know, got the GG1, it got 4876, pictured here at Paoli in 1939-ish, I think, right? Um, so shiny. Yes. It's oh, just a, it's a good old days. What um, a miserable fucking place. <laughs> and they go through, they inspect the train, the angle cock on car 8665 was still in the correct open position, right? And they don't have any braking trouble through the later stops. Philadelphia, Wilmington, Baltimore, everything's fine. Hunky-dory. Now, hmm, problem solved. This is speculation on my part. I, I don't know if this is accurate, but I, I'd say wherever, if, if there was a place where that angle cock was going to get bumped, it was here, mm. in the Baltimore and Potomac Tunnel, right after Baltimore Penn Station, right? Um, right. Well, the last place where we know everything was working. <laughs> yeah. It's an old tunnel built 1873. It's uh, very long. It has very tight curves. It's very steep. Um, oh. It is still used today by high-speed trains, oh. which travel at very <laughs> low speeds through it. Um, As indeed they do for the rest of their journey. <laughs> uh, a recurring American theme. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I just I, th thinking back to the train simulator stream where I just spent an hour getting madder and madder and madder at the existence of the Acela, <laughs> just being like, why does it do twenty five miles an hour? This is it's getting better. We we just bought new ones. They go even faster, but don't go even faster because the tracks won't let them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stupid country. Well, they're they're, they're upgrading the section from Trenton to New Brunswick to um, yeah, 160 miles an hour. Uh, I'm sure, they yeah. are. Yeah, they're, they're replacing the sleepers with a slightly like firmer kind yeah, of cheese. Yeah, they're putting in cheddar. <laughs> didn't, didn't have enough. Uh, didn't have enough money for Parmesan, but you know, <laughs> so you, they got to spend folding money to get Greer. <laughs> <laughs> mm, just, just like due to like mob ties in the construction industry, just all of the sleepers are pecorino. Oh God! Oh God! Oh, God. <laughs> I told you to get the DOP sleepers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So after you get out of the B and P tunnel, you're home free. It's 80 miles an hour track all the way to Landover, Maryland, which is right around here. Mm. And the train has gone into Union Station right here, right? Later yeah, right. in Maryland, home of FedEx Field, which, thank God, nothing bad will happen regarding FedEx in a second. I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> oh, the irony. Oh, yeah, right, right here, mm. FedEx Field. Uh -huh. Dan Snyder used to charge people for parking, even if they took the metro there. Yeah, Dan really? Snyder is one of those uh, other Jewish people... Where every time I hear his fucking name, I'm just like, God damn it, dude. 
<laughs> I just I just love that you have this arrow pointing to all of the shit that's near Union Station, like the National Mall, and like the image that forms in my head here is a kind of train 911, where you just like ram the train into like all of the his historic sites, but because it's a train, it gets into like one basement and stops. Oh no, there's there's a way to do that, but that's in the next slide. Um <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right, so the track from the BNP tunnel to Union Station is very straight, very level, until you get around to Landover, right? But it's an 80 mile an hour speed limit, right? Um, now, at Landover, the engineer, Henry W. Brower, sees an approach signal ahead, right? And indicates he's got to slow down, right? And he applies- mm. Why would you call it an approach if you have to slow- that's a caution signal. Just, just do the rational British signaling thing of yellow means start stopping and red means stop. Well, no, because it's three lights diagonally. <sighs> yeah, not, 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 a, not a fan of the position light. No, no, thank you. Just, just lay it out like a car. You have the speed limits in like a big red and white circle, and then you just have traffic lights. It's very easy. Yeah, but two of these lights could go out, and how many times have you been to the moon? <laughs> <laughs> just, just using PRR position signals to get to the moon is the funniest shit I can imagine. <laughs> just be like, well, we're in orbit, but it's a, is that approach medium or approach slow? Uh, first of all, that yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> So, all right, here's the, the thing about Washington D.C. Right, as we know from our our, our yeah. big wet president. It's built on a swamp. So they cursed by God. Right? <laughs> it's built on yeah. a swamp at sea level. So this is all pretty yeah. steep 0.73% grade, right? Ooh. Mm. So when the brakes a tasty downhill slope. So when 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 Brower applies the brakes, they start to slow the train down a little bit, but not as much as he expected. And then once he hits the grade, the train actually starts accelerating. <laughs> and that's not good. Because only the first three cars are applying the brakes. And those are uh, not, not only not sufficient, they're also the lightest cars on the train. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Because they're not full of, like, sleeping people. They're just full of, like, a compressor and a dude with a middle initial, which nobody has well, anymore. no, because they're all, they're, they're, most of them have already rusted away. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like rusting bits off in travel. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like losing like windows and shit. So, so Brower applied the emergency brakes, and even that wasn't enough to slow the train down. Like all these, there's like sparks flying out the bottom of the train. There's like wheels that are, you know, just stopped, and there's like you know they're they're being worn down by the rail mm. as they're just sliding over it. Brower decides I'm. Big wheel slip. Yeah. Oh dear. He tries to throw the oh. engine into reverse, and that blew out the traction motors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just literally like the cartoon bit of you, you pull the big emergency handler that comes off in your yes. hands. <laughs> so, 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 so we've got like a 200, 200 ton train, 215 I just did mm. Googling, 215 ton loco. And then, like, what? How much trailing load? Like, just more, lots more. Three. And so you got like yeah. the left part of like five hundred tons, probably, just hammering down a one in one hundred and forty grade towards a terminal. It's a. Great. Yeah. That's fine. It's a sixteen car train. <laughs> uh, this this is why you get on the phone to the signaler and you'd be like, "Ho ho ho, you know, having a pop breaks." <laughs> so that's that's. I, at this point, I'm not sure. If they had train phone on this train, um, they must have mm. had a radio. Okay, it's Justin here in post production to add a correction. So I didn't know about this bit when we recorded. So I'll explain briefly here. At the time of this accident, you know, 1953, railroads hadn't really adopted radio communications at all, right? The frequencies just weren't available yet. Radio wasn't widely adopted for railroad communications until the 1960s. Most railroads stuck with paper train orders that you could pick up on the fly. You had this special hook thing to do it, right? Um, but 
the Pennsylvania Railroad had something called train phone. Okay, so train phone worked with electromagnetic induction uh, through the tracks or through telegraph wires adjacent to the tracks, right? And fr from from the electrical signals, which which you could get from there, uh, you could transmit voice, right? Uh, this was uh, picked up and transmitted by a long horizontal antenna on top of the train. It, it looks like a handrail, but it's not a handrail. It's an antenna. So using this system, the engineer could communicate with dispatchers or the switch tower via an ordinary phone headset, right? Um, now, the thing is, uh, train phones, low-frequency electromagnetic induction was completely overwhelmed by the 12 kilovolt, 25 hertz overhead wires, which were supplying trains with electric power. So the system wasn't installed on electric uh, portions of the Pennsylvania Railroad network, such as the Northeast Corridor. So the engineer of the Federal Express would have had no way to communicate with the dispatcher or the tower to tell them that the brakes were out. You know, except to blow the horn a whole bunch. All right, back to the podcast. But he starts, the engineer starts blowing the horn, you know, in short, rapid bursts, like, oh, this is a runaway train. Uh, you know, and I, I don't know if he... <laughs> help. <laughs> yeah, this is a runaway train, guys. We got a problem. Um, I assume yeah. they have a radio. Just like, the, the railroad for, well, there's your problem, is honk, honk, yes. honk, <laughs> honk. All right, so this is... This is the station, uh, this is Union Station in Washington, D.C., right? Um, you know, mm. a very, very large station. Like, nice, nice throat. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's nice. Big, I'm, I'm, like, approving of this layout, it's very nice. Look, yeah, yeah, it's nice. A little bit tight at the throat, but, you know, that's, that's yeah. what she said. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, it, it's, it's because D.C. is all federal, you have to have the, like, Mormon suit and tie Yes. <laughs> you just button it all the way up. So, very large station. Uh, this main concourse here actually was the largest room in the world when it was built. Um, now they've stuck a mall USA, in there. USA! <laughs> I, I noticed something, that there's, there's a thing that's important, I think, for this tale. There appear to only be tracks going into this place, and there don't appear to be any going the other, out the other side. Hmm. That's true, Ooh. yeah. It appears to be some kind of terminus. Yeah. All the tracks down here actually go into what's called the First Street Tunnel, right? And what that does is it goes further south, and it squeezes in between um, two Senate office buildings, the Capitol building, the Supreme Court building, the Library of Congress, the Cannon House office building, the Republican National oh. Convention <laughs> headquarters, and half a dozen other, you know, high-value targets. Um, yeah, the places <laughs> that you just said. Yeah. Parody in Minecraft. Do you want to tell the nice ladies and gentlemen uh, what you told me as we were like 500 feet away from the U.S. Capitol building? Yeah, you want to, you want to tell the nice people? I, boss, I don't remember what I said. What did I say? And, and uh, you said that you could, and you'll have to delete this part out. You said that you could do a terrorism. Your words. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it would be fairly easy to do a terrorism. I'm not going to do a terrorism. I, I'm not suggesting yeah, anyone yeah, do a terrorism. It's like the perfect V for Vendetta, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it, yeah. You, you guys had to make up having a subway station underneath the Parliament Building. We actually have a yeah. tunnel that goes right under there. Is, no, well, we we, ha we have one now, but part, but like Westminster Tube Station is largely composed of like giant concrete reinforcing pillars, just so you can't do this in Minecraft. Uh, I see. Oh, uh, ours was built in 1903 out of shitty brick in Minecraft, so <laughs> maybe a little bit later than that. I don't remember. You, you, you get one creeper down there. It's like, I, I'm thinking about, like, rail, railroad security, like, the, the like lack of investment in railroads, it leads you to stuff like the Chicago flood, but also just, like, building an entire network of very poorly constructed tunnels under your center of government with no security. And it reminds me very much of the time when the New York Daily News found out that you could get into pretty much any like sewer grate or like MTA door or anywhere you wanted in New York with like a Yale masterpiece. <laughs> and their response to this, their response to this was, it, it, this will stay with me for a long time, was to print 
a quarter of a page, 3000 DPI photo of what that key looks like. <laughs> uh, as, as, a, as, as a call to, like, I guess, ban it. Uh, so I think about that a lot. I like that kind of collective approach. It's good. Like, let everyone, let yeah, everyone yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. can go in there. Yeah, and the, 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 the New York Daily News is a comrade, and it was doing practice. <laughs> Well, one thing about this is, um, you know, they're, they're, M-Track does security procedures at its big stations, right? They make you queue in a big line for a long time for no reason rather than go onto the platforms, right? And I guess that's, I don't know what that's for. They say it's for security. They're not like checking bags or anything. It's to annoy me. Yeah. No, it's to annoy me. Mm. They don't even check your fucking ticket anymore, man. Yeah, I, that's true. I used to take... Just, just to like do some profiling, I used to I take guess. the Virginia Railway Express uh, when I was in high school out of the station a lot to go home after rowing practice and they just let you walk down on the platform with impunity uh <laughs> you, you the can, way it should be you can even do that if there's an m-track train idling there and you just get on that instead <laughs> mm. like Br britain britain now is like we don't have the like airport security unless you're trying to get on the eurostar but what we do still have as a rule are uh, the like ticket barriers that like smack you hard in both lungs at once if you try oh, to like yeah, go through them. Yeah, they're fully paddleboard you, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do, do, do not like those except, things. Always get nervous going through them. Except in York, which is like the only, one of the huh. few big stations, it's, I live in York, old York, and um, <laughs> yeah, it's the few big stations that don't have those stupid ticket gates. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. you, can, uh, you can dive oh, on I... and, and uh, avoid paying for your fare to your heart's content. Yeah, in, in, in Minecraft. I, I mean, one thing that I, uh, I was struck by was the, um, in San Francisco, I think it was the Muni, uh, they, they put in new ticket gates, and they will just crush your head. Like, they're at head level if you're in a wheelchair, and they just come in from the sides in like two big wedges. And it's just like, yeah, great, you, can just, you just have a, like a, a head vice or DC now. Metro Wars. has the same thing. Yeah. <sighs> so, anyway, these, these southern tracks, right, you know, this is where um, if you were taking a train further south, like, say, the Southern Crescent, you know, the, the train would pull in here, they'd swap out the locomotive for a diesel locomotive. In 1953, that's when they went through and segregated the train, because it was Jim Crow from there on out. Um, mm. was, yeah, I know. Also, the reason the Pentagon has, like, the most toilets for any building in the world by, like, square oh, mile. yeah, because they went across the river and they had to do segregation there. Yep, because it's in Virginia, and it has so it still has like two bathrooms next to each other in all of the bathrooms. It's cool. Yeah. Thanks for nothing, Roz. <laughs> mm. So anyway, <laughs> Roz per, per, like personally instituted segregation in the Commonwealth of Virginia. <laughs> these these upper level tracks, right? Uh, they're stub ended, right? They just end right here. There's also a little spur right here in the corner that goes into the government printing office building. They used to get boxcars and newsprint delivered there. Um, mm. uh, well, once again, parody redacted Minecraft in a video yeah. game, but <laughs> yeah. very, very secure. Yeah, well, sometimes they now park like a switcher locomotive there when they're not using it. Uh, mm. But pay attention right here. This is K Tower, right? And that's a switching tower, right? Now, since... Since the uh, Federal Express ends at Union Station, it was going into Track 16 on the upper level, right? Here's oh, now you know, you're talking yeah, my language. Yeah. Here, here, here's <laughs> K Tower, right? And he, the yeah. guy, the the guy inside K Tower didn't see the train coming until it came around under Florida Avenue. Now Florida Avenue used to be a bridge about here, slightly closer than the bridge farther down, and mm. he sees. Uh, this train is coming in hot. Um, yeah, sparks, yeah. it's honking. Bits of it are falling off because of Jibble rust. Jibble 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 <laughs> <laughs> there are no noises that train isn't making. Yeah. It's just like it has an old-timey car horn for some reason. There's a guy leaning out a window with a harmonica. Auga! <laughs> <laughs> so... All right, so he's he's already set up the switches for it to go into track sixteen. By the time he sees it, and and then he sees it, and he's like, "This is not good." See, he, hmm. he telephones the station master's office um, when he sees the train. He's like, "Run away on track sixteen, right?" And, and a clerk yeah. picks up the uh. phone, and and he hears "Run away on track 16. 
and he can already look out the station uh, master's window, oh, dear. <laughs> which is like right at the end of track 16, and see the train coming. And he just yells to the whole office, run for your lives. <laughs> I mean, is that wrong? Not a good thing to hear. No, I mean, I, I feel like this was this was a more comical time in American history where when a guy in your office just yelled "Run for your lives," it meant that some slapstick <laughs> bullshit was about to happen to you, like a train was about to come through the window instead of like the guy who got laid off two weeks ago is here with an AR-15 yes. and like. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just, 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 just the idea of a passenger train doing the land shark bit from Saturday Night Live. It just like it knocks on the door. I've just, I've just got the idea of everyone like run for your lives. Everyone lifts up and their feet are doing that cartoon thing where they don't actually move, but they're just kind of spinning yeah. on the spot. <laughs> so, it's about twenty seconds from the phone call to when the train Jeez. was at the end of the platform. <sighs> Everyone got the hell out. Mm. Um, like I was there. I, there I wasn't mean, time to be confused. Pro- People ran. <laughs> pro- pro- props to like props to employees for their cardio. I mean, yeah. like Jesus. Good game. Everyone was healthier Fucking back then. Booking they had, it. They, they weren't obese like they are now in America. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they weren't obese, but they were smoking 120 cigarettes a day. Uh, Cause and effect. <laughs> I just love the idea that all these people run out, but they're like trailed by an enormous cloud of smoke because they're all still lighting up independently. Uh, so everyone got out of the station master's office. Now this this is the concourse at Union Station at the time, right? That's nice. Love love a terminating V. This is now oh, a mall. It's, it looks like shit. <laughs> Yeah, you, I love to like go to fucking Sparrows and like get a lobster sandwich that will eventually kill me a week no, later. The, the Sparrow is uh, now on the the new concourse. To be fair, there's also a Pizzeria Udo. Well, this is true, but that's mm, near the I, waiting I really room. Like Pizzeria Udo. I know the the Spar- I just like the luxury. Now, the weird thing about the new concourse at Union Station is is that it it's the most dark and grimy place I've ever been to. That's made almost entirely of glass. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was every fine. that was every UK station roof until about four years ago when they discovered uh, brushes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, once again, our, our, our notorious enemy, railroad grime, mm. that just kind of like appears. We finally got the license to import Windex. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just love the idea that oh no, U- UK station roofs are that bad because of the uh, the trains that shoot the poop upwards. Uh, yeah, literally. Well, I'm, so York's. I'm going to talk about York Station again. York Station. Every please, every single. Please don't tell me I'm not joking. Every single. No, I'm literally not joking. Every single station, uh, every single track is electrified, right? And yet most of the trains that go through are diesel, so they're just spitting the poop upwards like there's no tomorrow. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah, awesome. right windows. It's the same as it, like St Pancras. Everyone makes a big fuss about St Pancras Station in London. Oh, it's so beautiful, but they basically just mm. turned it into a shopping mall and reduced the number of platforms. Yes. So, uh, mm. the, su- such is life. You know, it's like the new, um, the new World Trade Center transportation center, which is just an upscale mall. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, it's an upscale <laughs> mall with like some trains tucked away in a corner. <laughs> Al Qaeda's greatest crime. Yes. This is like being being responsible for building a giant boat. Well, if you count the nine eleven memorial, two gigantic malls in New yes. York. All right, so they started evacuating the main concourse, right? Because the runaway was about to come through. Uh, probably somewhere down here, I would guess, because at the mm. time it would have been it it it, it, it would have come through what is now Gate C. <laughs> you got to use gates like it's an airport rather than tracks like a train station. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, as the uh, meanwhile on board the train, some of the conductors figured out what was up. They started running from car to car, telling people get on the ground, or if they had time, move <laughs> to the car further back. Right, you know, lie down. Yep. On- Same thing happened to Gare de Lyon. Guy, a guy just <laughs> runs through the train, just moving everybody backwards with him. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and as the train approached the station. The grade evened out, it started to slow down properly. By the time it hit the platforms, at uh, the end of the platform, it was still going 45 miles an hour, though. 
Bloody hell. That's fine. There's a buffer. Yeah. There's a buff. Is there a buffer? Well, there was. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, oh my god, I did sums. This is like a thousand tons of train. That's like a thousand mm. tons of train at forty miles an hour. I didn't yeah. stop for shit. Well, actually, to be fair, I put a station in the way and maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it um it it it, it burst through the buffer at thirty five miles an hour. Managed to shave off another ten miles an hour at some point. Sweet. Mm. Big, 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 big buffer yeah. spring. The unsung hero. Of this, the inanimate carbon rod. <laughs> it reared up over the end of the platform, right? Uh, now it's, it's just demolished the ornate, uh, you know, railings and gates, and it smashed straight through the station master's office, right? Um, <sighs> the mm. first three cars, including uh, car 8665, went with it over the uh, bumpers and into the main concourse, right? Now, the main concourse's floor, of course, was not designed to hold the weight of a 150-ton GG1, right? Oh, that's so, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that's, the, that's the concourse floor up here, under the carriages that are still yes. up, right? Yeah, that's the concourse oh, floor, yeah. So, it collapsed, and the locomotive fell <laughs> into the baggage area, right? Which uh, is now the food court. Um, Oh, good. It's, like a, it's good. It's, it's always good when we learn lessons from the past, isn't it? Yeah. Always good. Mm. Yeah. It, it has the... I, so many times I've been in a food court and have thought, if only a thousand ton train could bust through the <laughs> ceiling and murder me it, right now. The food court uh, has the northernmost uh, Bojangles, to my knowledge. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting outside the northernmost Bojangles, and I'm thinking, Man, I could really go for being just <laughs> atomized by a diesel locomotive. Because those so, fuckers tore down the one in Reading. Yeah. <laughs> Do you seriously have a northernmost Bojangles grievance? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're they they just keep moving them further south. So, oh, yeah. That sounds like the competition's about twenty four seven Greg's in the UK. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So now the thing is, all the baggage handlers had just gone on break. This is a theme. So Bloody hell. again, slap. No one was there when this happened. <laughs> uh, losing the time. Bojangles is claimed to still be in Reading. I was thinking of the York, Pennsylvania one, which they did tear down. I just, I, I so it's like City of Truro. They're like, cl it's claimed northernmost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The Guinness has not actually recorded this as of Bojangles yet, so we can't <laughs> say for certain. <laughs> anyway, so I think about like four people got trapped in the wreckage briefly, but that was it, right? Um, after the after the train just plowed into the waiting room, right? Everything was quiet apart from the hissing of the broken brake pipes and the steam lines and stuff like that, right? Mm. The engineer climbs out of the locomotive. <laughs> Under its own power. He, he was completely uninjured. D dusts off, dusts off hands. Oh man, what a day. Just, just, climbs out and, just climbs out and says, well that was a close one. Yeah. <laughs> no, drops the title right there. Just look, looks at the train and is just like... Yeah. Well. Uh, the, 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 the fireman had a couple scratches, but also just, you know, walked out, right? Uh, <laughs> What did they build the fucking locomotive out the, the of? The GG1 frame is basically a truss bridge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of the reasons why a couple other like mitigating factors in there, I, I think, is because because it's a truss bridge, right? Um, it, the cab is incredibly tiny. Um, there's no room hmm. to bounce around in there while you're flying through the air and collapsing <laughs> into a basement. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know though like old, old old american trains you have like very angular very metal sort of controls i i, I it's a wonder nobody like split their head open that's on a good that point thing. yeah like <laughs> just okay I've, I've done some number crunching because it's my want and uh so this train yeah best part of five hundred thousand pounds in weird american money and uh 215 tons <laughs> Um, which is bearing in mind that a bridge installed in Manchester recently, uh, part, as part of the Ordsal Court, weighed 600 tons. This thing weighs a third of the weight of an entire steel bridge. So no wonder it was a truss structure. Blood, yeah, yeah, bloody hell. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. 
I want to. I want to fucking put a turret on this thing <laughs> and like encircle the Wehrmacht Sixth Army. It's incredible. It could, it probably could. Yeah. could single handedly have taken Berlin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if only you had uh, just gotten some GG ones. Uh, they were around. Yeah. You just had to ship them over on like a Liberty ship. And, oh, yeah. there we go. That's your problem. Well, do, there's your problem. Do a little bit of trimming so I'll fit European loading gauge. Um, <laughs> just, I, I love the idea of like an alternate history thing where the only thing that's different is we give the Soviets war trains. <laughs> so cool. Oh, that's why the North Koreans still run uh, Alco copies. All mm. Soviet diesel uh, engines are just uh, copies of Alco uh, diesels. That's why there's so much goddamn smoke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so what you're saying is, if it's a copy and it works, then it's not yes. a copy. That's what I say about the Pirate Bay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so passengers started climbing out of the cars under their own power. Um, a, a, a man was heard to say, as he hurled a chair through a smoking car window, <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, at least that guy got a good, tw like, a fulfilling experience out of it. He got to tick that one off the bucket list. Uh, the, the broken station master's clock read eight thirty-six a.m. I believe in Landover mm. they were twenty minutes late. Um, so they uh, and I think they they made up about ten or fifteen minutes of time. Uh, so what's typical? You can't even get you can't even get a train crash on time. So forty three people were injured in the accident. Six required hospitalization overnight. Yeah, but hospitalization in in the fifties is like a doctor like blows cigarette smoke in your face for an hour. Shoot up with morphine, baby. <laughs> but no one was killed. Bloody hell! Yeah. USA! Yeah. USA! <laughs> <laughs> so oh, the lesson here is, I guess, always always run your train slightly late because uh, the people in the basement in the baggage area are going to get on break just in time for you to like collapse the ceiling. Yes. Yet. <laughs> yes. Awesome. In the aftermath, uh, NBC News was on site and broadcasting 67 minutes after the accident. It was like one of the first, uh, one of the first uh, live broadcasts of a horrific disaster that happened so soon after the horrific disaster occurred. Amazing. You can, yeah, you just have to like flip on a, an entire like semi truck full of vacuum tubes and sequence. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you gotta yeah. Just, just wind up the camera. You gotta drive the truck full of camera equipment into the station concourse. <laughs> you gotta burst through another wall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I'm alive, and then the NBC truck just takes you out as yeah. it comes in the wall. Bringing the news to you. <laughs> uh, there were some slight delays to train service, but no, nothing was cancelled. They still ran a regular schedule that day. <laughs> that rules so hard. Just put some tape around yeah. it, it's well, fine. Dwight Eisenhower was being inaugurated a couple days later, right? And they right. had to get the station back up to full capacity as soon as possible. So, what did they decide to do? Right? Leave you it. hold the train out with a big, uh, big crane. Uh, leave it. No, no. What they did is they got a crane in. They lowered the GG1 into the basement and left it there. Then they built a temporary <laughs> floor. Oh, my yeah. basement yeah. train! They built a temporary <laughs> floor over the big <laughs> hole. Right. <laughs> you, you you leave the train in the basement for a couple of days and you come in and it's just wearing a gaming headset. It's <laughs> like I'm playing Fortnite, leave me alone. You're not my real dad anyway. <laughs> why why has the train punched this is the Kyle of trains because it's just punched a big hole through some drywall. <laughs> the the first two cars they um they had to take out and they scrapped those. Uh, the third car they just put back on the rails. That's eighty six sixty five, which we were talking about before, right? And they mm. they stored those on a side track where they're going to do a investigation into what caused the accident, right? You know, dur during the investigation, they figured out that from abrasions on the paint of the angle cock, that it had somehow mm. been jostled into moving by contact with the coupler housing, right? And of course, of course, stripping the paint off the angle cock means that that entire car immediately turns to rust and collapses. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so they, um, you know, that was how they determined the cause of the accident. They had to 
alter every single 8600 series car that the New Haven Railroad owned to correct this problem, which turned out to not be in the specifications. They, they were supposed to be designed a different way, but Pullman slash Osgood Bradley fucked up. Um, Classic. Some guy was just like, oh yeah, that, that, that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, after the inauguration, they went in, they, they took GG1, 4976, cut it up into, some people say three pieces, some people say six pieces. They shipped it out to Altoona, and they put it back together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, delightful. And it ran until 1983. <laughs> oh, yes. You, you love to see Absolute it. Absolute hero, yeah. Loco. So it was... <laughs> yeah, it was just... I just love the idea of lifting out like a a wafer thin slice of diesel <laughs> locomotive. Uh, like there's so diesel there's, tar tar. There was a, a diesel loco derailed up in um, up next to a lock in Scotland uh, quite a while back, Loch Treek. And um, yeah, definitely they just they, it was in a plastic bag for a while because they couldn't decide what to do with it, and eventually they just cut it into pieces and took it away. There are no roads to it. <laughs> So uh, yeah, just just a bag for life with a with a train. Yeah, they just in past it. it. It was like they just put it in a plastic <laughs> bag, and it was fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. So forty eight seventy six, uh, you know, it ran until nineteen eighty three. It was on New Jersey Transit in the last days of its life. Um, and they donated it first. They tried to give it to the Smithsonian, who wouldn't take it. And then they tried to- and then What? They what? Yeah, they're afraid it would bust through the- <laughs> <laughs> it, it wants to go back to the basement. And then- It keeps calling people pogs. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they eventually- they gave it to the B&O Railroad Museum in Baltimore, right? And they were gonna restore it for a while, but then their- the roof mm. of their roundhouse collapsed and they had to devote all the funding to fixing that. <laughs> Um, so now yeah. it's Vengeance. now it's sitting on a siding and rusting away in Baltimore. Uh, you, you can see it if you take a train ride there um, at the we museum. Gotta, we, we got we got to rescue this game of yes. train. Uh, we, we got to get like a, a sponsorship. Go half and half with like Monster Energy uh, to like paint it up like a monster mm. can and get it out of retirement. I'll, I'll start a GoFundMe. Uh, <laughs> fire up forty eight seventy six. <laughs> Um, and yeah. using my vast expertise in locomotive restoration, make this happen. Yes, they can use it in the construction of the uh, of the California high speed rail. Just just like barrel it along the tracks and just bulldoze a few of the uh, mm. blocks where it needs to <laughs> yeah. rail. Uh, there's there's definitely use for it out there yet. Oh yeah, <laughs> just we we just put a big saw blade on the front of it. Yeah, but it's not kill dozer. It's. Uh, Kill four eight seven six GG one. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, and usually this is where this is where retellings of this tale end. But you know, the other question: What happened to New Haven Coach uh, eighty six sixty five? Right. Mm, and the truth that's what is, I know. <laughs> it it kept running. Um, it was repaired. Oh, yes. They repaired it. You know, to the extent that you could repair it. Right. And it. It'll yeah. buff out. Yeah. <laughs> to, to the, I mean, the, the car is fundamentally flawed from from just what it's made out of. But you know, <laughs> they repaired it. They put it back in service, and it ran with the Metropolitan Boston Transit Authority on commuter trains until the late 1980s. Oof. And it never this returned. Is, it never returned, yeah. and its fate is still yes. unlearned. Yes, we don't know what happened to it. Wait, really? We have no idea. Really? Um. This is Sucks. not the car in question. This is a car which is similar to it. Uh, ah. I could probably no. go in the records I mean, the, and see if it was scrapped, which it probably mm. was, but I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe it lives on somewhere in a siding. Yeah, people are <laughs> unsentimental about the actual passenger cars. Like, uh, there's a bunch of uh, like UK accidents where, like, you know, it kills a hundred people or whatever, and then they just take the last few uh, undamaged cars off the back of the train and just put them back into service. Because what else are you going to do? Yes. With them? Uh, so well, the, yeah, the people didn't cool, die. In I there. guess it's not like they're going to be haunted. No, it's fine. Yeah, but why, well, I don't know. One of the electric locos that runs up and down the East Coast mainline between Edinburgh and uh, London, um, Class Ninety One One Two Three. It was in both the Selby uh, disaster and the Hatfield derailment a few years before. It was the loco for both oh, of those. Fuck. Oh, geez. still running. That's good. Well, that's fine. That's <laughs> definitely haunted. Definitely. Yeah, they changed they changed the number to one three two just in case no one noticed. Except that we definitely all have the internet, and also there's not a thirty one. So 
Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Just, I just love the idea that you're just driving this around the ghost of a Land Rover that it just demolished <laughs> in the back. It's a major, major Streisand effect like not, not right there. Not the people. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the story of the wreck of the Federal Express. That mm. and and some say that the ghost train still haunts the Northeast Corridor to this very day. I Oh, it does. That's probably what uh, we were stuck yeah, at the time. Which is why the service is fucking slower now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult to get a ghost train to stick to timetables. We have to give up a whole, like, like five slots a day to ghost trains. We can't, can't negotiate <laughs> with the host railroad. Uh, because we, we're not on the same er, uh, plane of existence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Broke flying Scotsman, woke flying Dutchman. Uh. <laughs> Just gonna point out that track's crap again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it really is. Is that a fucking molehill in the middle of it? <laughs> it's, it's probably poop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> All right. They're gonna pay me to wade through it and read things. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Ne ne oh, for a living, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, so next week we're gonna do the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. Oh, excellent! That's right. Cannot wait. Yes. Do, do we do we think that the ghost trains leave ghost poop also? Like you just exoplasm on the line. Oh god! You know they do. It, that that would be bad. Hundred percent. That would not be that would good. Explain quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. You just it, the, if a ghost poops on ghost something, poop. does that make it haunted? I would assume, <clears throat> or at, le at least until you like shower. You're just haunting whatever. random things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, does that mean every toilet is haunted? If a ghost yeah, uses it, it must yeah. Be. Yeah, yeah. That that explain that seems various just... problems with my toilet recently. Uh <laughs> Well you, you you had your 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 toilet problems. I had the fire alarm upstairs that went off for twenty six consecutive hours. Oh you finally get uh, that fixed. Oh well, yeah, I saw. <laughs> Like and finally, we I, I waited it out because it like literally because it took that long that I couldn't get next day delivery on a crowbar. <laughs> uh, it, if it, if I had, then I would have parody redacted in Minecraft, uh, and I would have just put the door in. But like, no, I, I ended up waiting it out. But it drove me absolutely insane. And the fun thing is, it, once like a fire alarm's been going off for twenty six hours, when it stops, you can still hear it because your brain is just like, oh, I've just tuned oh, that out. God. <laughs> uh, wrong. Yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. I love it. I love. I love having tinnitus now. It's a fresh kind of hell you just described. <laughs> mm -hmm -hmm. Well, it went through two fire department calls, and they, and both times they went in, and they were like, "Well, there's nobody in there, so we can't really. We're not. We're not the annoyance brigade." Uh, <laughs> So like, yeah, thank, thanks, guys. My, my thanks to the, the life-saving heroes of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service who are so strict about protocol that they couldn't fucking turn off a fucking fire alarm for 26 hours. Did, I, did anyone call the landlord? Uh, I mean, nobody, nobody was in. I don't know who owns that, because I think the, la the building is like different units owned by different landlords. Oh, he was probably busy confusing. making ang angry videos about Airbnb. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That soul patch guy. <laughs> yeah. There was a there's there's guys that are mad on our bonus episode. Uh, quick plug, bonus episode. Go give us money for yeah, it. We, on we talked about Protestantism. It's just like, uh, why are the you know why are any of the hosts? Why would any of them be religious? Why aren't they atheists? And like, I I actually uh, sorry, am an atheist, and I'm just like you fucking people. <laughs> it's that same shit, being a Jewish person, and just every fucking time someone says Jeffrey Epstein, or Lloyd Blankfeld, or Jamie Dimon, or Steve Mnuchin, I'm just like, guys, guys, you make us look so fucking bad. Someone's just like, why do you believe in God? And it's just like, God damn, it's none of your fucking business. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my fucking god. I just we, we, we will explain why we believe in God on the Tacoma Arrows yes. episode. Yes. Mm. But in the meantime, listen to our papist propaganda on the bonus episode. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, do, do, the do that. I call it literal idol worship more than once. <laughs> <laughs> right. L listen yeah. to our sectarian podcast. Listen, listen to Trash Future. Watch uh, Justin's yeah. YouTube channel on Do Not Eat One. Uh, follow Liam at Old Man Anderson on Twitter. And what else do we have to plug? Gareth, yeah, Gareth, Gareth, do you have do you have a commercial? <laughs> 
I have a commercial, which is uh, follow me on the Twitters. Um, I don't shop. Uh, and also, if you want to hear about niche British railway stuff about the Pennines, Google it. Uh, then I'm live uh, on uh, for Rail Natter, hashtag Rail Natter, which is a YouTube mm. thing which I've made up, and it's going not dreadfully awesome. so far. So hooray! Ooh, fun. I have to say, one hundred percent of the audience of this will be into that. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Do that. Yes. Go 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 watch the thing. I'll put it in the. I'll put a link to it in the description. All right, uh, I think that's the podcast. I believe right. so. Mm. Uh, bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Justin, Justin, say Mogai again. Mogai. Ah, oh, yeah. Gosh. There we go. Beautiful. Nailed it. I didn't, have to read read it I didn't have to read it, so I could pronounce it properly. I'm sure. I'm sure if I <laughs> yeah. saw what it, how it's spelled, I would. My head would like implode. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye. Cheerio. <laughs>